You're listening to our current reality street ministry founded on the indivisible boldness, strength with a vast portfolio of exciting momentum. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for bringing me here today. I could have been anywhere, but you brought me here to speak to those who do not know you. I thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning, getting me started on my way. But now, Lord, I ask you to speak through me, to speak to them, that they may hear your word and obey. I ask you, Lord, to fill me with your spirit, to give me the words to say, to deliver this message, that these people may hear your word and turn to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Romans 8. Therefore, if there is no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior, for the law of the Spirit is of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. The law of our new being has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that is overcome sin and remove its penalty, its power, being weakened by the flesh, that is man's nature, without the Holy Spirit, God did. He sent his own son in the likeness of sinful man as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, subdued it, and overcome it in the person of his own son, so that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not live our lives in the way, in the ways of the flesh, that is guided by worldliness and our sinful nature, but live our lives in the ways of the Spirit, guided by His power, for those who are living according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify the body, but those who are living according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit, which will and purpose. Now the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. God bless you, sir. God bless you. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace, the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever. The mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits are actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot and let me stop right there and say this. This is the reason why many people today cannot live a life under Christ because they first won't submit to the Spirit of God. The Bible says it does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh living a life that caters to sinful appetites and impulsive cannot please God. Many people believe in God. They say, oh, look, God's right there. He's all over there, but they don't live the life unto Christ. However, you are not living in the flesh that is controlled by the sinful nature, but in the spirit, in, if in fact the spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. Again, ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, Many people say they believe in God, but they don't live a life under Christ. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. If Christ lives in you through your natural body is dead because of sin, your spirit is alive because of righteousness, which God provides. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's important to understand that love 
Love is essential. We all need love. Love is essential to human beings. The love of a parent for their child is the first thing a baby should feel. That love should be shown in many ways. Feeding a baby even at two o'clock in the morning when it would be much nicer to stay in the bed than sleep, changing dirty diapers so the little one is comfortable, teaching the child to walk, to talk, is a parent's responsibility. And in the process of learning to walk, the little one will take many fails. A good parent will encourage and help the child to try to try again and again until soon their little feet are running into all sorts of mischief that brings about another form of love, discipline. As a parent myself, and as parents that are here, we have to sacrifice a lot in order to raise a child to be a responsible adult, make good choices. And hopefully that child has learned about love, true love, not the lust of the flesh, but the agapo love of God. Agapo is a word, an action word. God always demonstrates his love. The noun form is agape, which is what we usually think when describing God's love and is the love that Christians need to show each other. Because after all, God is love. See, God created the world and all of it that is in it. Then Adam made a choice to sin, and that choice had an eternal cost. And because of sin, humanity could go no further, no longer have a fellowship with the Holy God. The immortal life Adam and Eve experienced in the Garden of Eden was now a life ruled by death. God could have left Adam and his descendants to die in sin and be separated from him forever. But God's love for his creation didn't end with Adam's sin. There was one way for the separation to be mended, and that was for God's blood to be shed in a physical form, a spiritual form. That is the only way for sin and death to lose its hold upon the soul of man. God spoke to his prophets. He wrote his words. They wrote his words into scripture. There are many prophecies concerning a coming redeemer, especially Isaiah 9, 6. Job, after going through much suffering, much loss, God bless you, much loss at the hands of Satan and unkind words from people who called themselves friends proclaim for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy my body yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold and not another whom my reins be consumed. Job 19.25 That's quite a proclamation by a man who lived many centuries before Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. Job had faced much suffering. In fact, Easter. Many people don't understand what Easter is. They think it's about a rabbit and eggs. But they have no idea that suffering drew him closer to God we are never promised we won't face trials and tribulations but if we have faith in God he will see us through many prophets spoke God's words of prophecy the prophet Isaiah told of a coming Messiah and how he would suffer for sinners he is despised, rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. 
we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. We, all we like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Isaiah 53 and three. It was told that Jesus was coming. Jesus suffered much in order to purchase our redemption. The accounts of his betrayal and the trial he faced can be read in the Gospels. Isaiah uttered these words centuries before Jesus was even born. But the description of his death and burial is totally accurate. Jesus knew he would face these things, but he chose to be our sacrifice to take away our sin. He was despised by the religious leaders. He was betrayed by one of his followers and another of his disciples denied knowing him. Jesus had no sin, but was beaten and crucified for us. He took our sin upon himself and felt the emptiness when God the Father turned away from him. Our Heavenly Father cannot look upon sin. Jesus faced all of the abuse willingly for you and for me. Because of him, we can be redeemed. And those who believe in him are redeemed and reconciliated with God by faith. Without God, I couldn't be here today. Without God, I couldn't stand here and talk on this microphone. Someone else would have had to come do this. God would have sent someone else. Adam's sin brought eternal death to mankind. And it seems like people here are happy with that. But before the cross, a person had to follow the Jewish law perfectly to the T, all while looking forward to the coming Messiah in order to avoid eternal damnation. It was impossible for a person to live perfectly and do the works of the law. When a person died, their body went into the grave, but their soul went to the abode of the dead, called Sheol in Hebrew. There were two parts of this abode. One side was called torments. And this was where the wicked were awaiting judgment. This is where the wicked right now are awaiting judgment. At the great white throne of God. The other side was known as Abraham's bosom or paradise. This side was where those who looked forward to the coming Messiah awaited his appearance. When Jesus told the story of the rich man and Lazarus, he described a very poor and sickly beggar named Lazarus. 
the word of God tells us, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Do you really think he saw a mask or a goofy juice shot there? No. He saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Luke 16, 22. We learn a few things from this passage. After our body dies, our souls live on. We remember people we knew in life and we can recognize them. We know that hell is a real place of eternal torment. But we also know that paradise is also real. The rich man made his own choice. Like many people here, they make their own choice to walk by. They make their own choice to reject God. You make your own choice. Like the rich man. He made his own choice. He had his life. When it comes to this type of play, there is no do-overs. That's why I plead with the people here today to think carefully about how they live their life because you will be held accountable. You will be held accountable. The rich man made his own choices in life which caused him to spend eternity in torments. Lazarus also made his own choices. He suffered much in life, but kept his faith in God. When he died, he was carried to the place of comfort after death. The rich man also remembered his family who were still living. He could have no contact with them, but he still cared about the choices they were making in life. He said, the Bible says he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in cool water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, 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 remember? Remember when you was coming through the parking lot? No, let me stop playing. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus, thy evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Luke 16, 24, if you want to look it up. The choices of where to spend eternity. That's the title of this message. The choice of where to spend eternity. The question I ask people here today is where do you want to spend your eternity? Where do you want to live? Where do you want to go when you die? That is the question that God is asking you. The choice of where to spend eternity must be made now. The choice of where you want to go must be made now. And there's only two choices heaven or hell you see god desires that we live with him in heaven that's why he calls us to live the right way once we pass from this life to the next we can't change where we spend eternity we can't change where then the, rat, the, the, the rich man asked for Lazarus to be sent to his father's house. He said, for I have five brethren. Five. That he may testify unto them, 
least they also come to this place of torment. Luke 16, 28, the rich man knew where he was. And like many people here today, they don't think that they'll go to hell because they don't believe hell is real. They don't believe that heaven is real. They don't believe that God is real. They just, we're just here. We're just, we're just here. We're just existing. Never mind all of this that you see in the sky, the clouds, the sun, the moon, the stars. N never mind all that because some, some type of explosion caused all of this so, to be so perfectly put in place. Never mind all of that. You just think about you. That's what the world wants you to do. Don't think about God. Don't turn to Jesus. You, because there's nothing wrong with you. Why do you need to turn to Jesus? That's what the world will have you to think. That's what I thought. I thought that. I thought that I'm accountable to no one. I don't have to answer to anyone. No one. But then one day my life changed. And I'm thankful for that change because if that change had not come, I would still be living the life that I was living before. I would still be living as a horrible person. I would still be cursing people out. I would still be sleeping around. I will still be doing these things that are against God. But thanks be to the Lord. He knocked on the door of my heart and said, I want to come in because you don't have to suffer no more. And that is what God is telling people today. He is knocking on the door of their heart and he is saying, let me come in. I want to come into your life so that you don't have to suffer no more. You know that you are suffering. It could be something small or it could be something extremely big. But yet we often live a life not wanting others to know that we are suffering. I lived that life. I would put a smile on in front of people. But when the doors were closed and I was by myself, that was where I cried. And God saw that. And I tell you today that God sees your suffering. And that is why he is continually knocking on the door of your heart. Constantly knocking on the door of your heart. But one day, one day God is going to say, I'm done. You don't want me? I'm done. I'll let you be. You live your life. But when you die, you got to come back to me. You got to report back here. I got to judge you. And since you didn't want me to come into your life, I got a place where people don't want me. God is asking you today, you want to go there? Do you want to go to the place where he's not? Where it's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where it's dark and it's hot. Abraham was slain that. Like everyone, they had Moses. They had the prophets to guide them in life. Today we got people like myself that go out to places like this and warn the people. Why? Because they're not thinking about God. They're, they're thinking about their next goofy juice shot. It's sad. People are on a fast track into hell. They don't even know it. Abraham explained that like everyone, they had Moses. They had the prophets to guide them in life. We also have scripture to guide us today. We have God today. We also have the New Testament, the rich man. He kept trying and wanted Lazarus to be sent to his family so that they would repent. Obviously, the entire family was the same mindset of having no mercy upon the less fortunate. And they also knew Lazarus and showed no kindness. I was watching a video today and this man walked into a supermarket and he said that he forgot 
his wallet at home. So he went to different people trying to ask them if they would buy him a water. Just one bottle of water. Would you buy him a water? And he kept going around everybody and he kept asking the people, would you buy me a water? I, I forgot my wallet at home. And they looked at him and they said, no, I will not buy you any water. I will buy you nothing. And they looked at him and they said, you got money, you buy it. And he assisted and he had told them, he said, I forgot my wallet at home. Can you buy this bottle of water for me? And he went to one person and they said no. And he went to another person and that person said no. And another person and that person said no. Until finally he went to a woman who had children. And he went to her and he said, would you buy me this water? I forgot my wallet at home. And the woman said, without even thinking, the woman said yes. And he turned to the woman and he said, you know, it's okay, but I want you to understand that because you would buy me a bottle of water, I'm going to pay for all of your groceries. And that is what happened. The man paid for her groceries. Why? Because she looked good? No. It was what she did. Like many people, they have no kindness. They have no kindness in their hearts. They don't turn to God. They turn to their own ways of thinking and they say they don't need God Abraham told the rich man who wasn't so rich in death he said unto him if they hear not Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one who rose from the dead. Luke 16, 31. So after Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection, everyone who places faith in him will go immediately to heaven after their death. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to put your faith in him. That story should cause everyone to look differently at their choices in life. God's word calls us to examine our health, examine our lives, to examine ourselves, to see if we are living a life unto Jesus. This message should cause people here to look differently at their choices in life. We have one who rose from the dead, Jesus Christ. His birth is celebrated at Christmas. Some people have Christmas and they don't even know why they have Christmas. His death, burial, resurrection, is celebrated in what is called Easter. Jesus is God in the flesh and gave his life so that we can live eternally. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is what God today wants to give to you. He wants to give to you eternal life because he loves you. Jesus Christ shed his blood to take sin away. Your sin, my sin, the police sin, the judge's sin, the fire department's sin. It's sin that separates us from God from God the Father but the blood of Jesus reconciliated us to God 
like the rich man you and i have to make the choice now before death carries us to eternal abode it's an individual's choice that nobody can make for you it's an individual choice if you reject the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ then you will spend eternity in torments with satan and with the rich man that didn't treat people right when he was alive that denied god when he was alive denied lavish when he was alive because many people are going to say oh lord oh i was such a good person oh look at me see i ain't heard a fly oh i fed the porn oh i did this oh lord oh i did the feed limit oh 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 but did they live under jesus because they were trying to live as righteous in their own eyes but they didn't live under god they put their trust in the mask they put their trust in the goofy juice. They put their trust in laws of men, powers of men, but they didn't trust in the power of God. Come on now, are you there? The prophet Isaiah prophesied regarding Christ's victory over death. He said, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death. Oh, death. I will be thy plagues, O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. The Apostle Paul quoted Hosea in his first letter to the Corinthians about the sting of death. He said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, ladies and gentlemen. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. One day, one day people are going to be looking for the word of God. They're going to be saying, where is the truth? But it's going to be nowhere to be found. Jesus conquered death. Not the CDC, not the FDA. Jesus conquered death. He shed his blood so that by faith we will live forever with him in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, how else do you think you will get to heaven? Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13, Jesus Christ was fully God, fully human. He freely laid down his life and was crucified on the cross. He was buried in a tomb that was sealed with a heavy stone so that no one could steal his body. Roman soldiers were posted to guard his grave in spite of man's effort to kill him and erase a memory of him. Those efforts went in vain because Jesus Christ lives The same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave is the same spirit that lives in me today. I don't worship a statue. I don't worship a cross because he ain't there. I don't worship a religion because it's not works that please God. I worship the Lord Jesus Christ because he is God. I worship the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the sustainer of all life. On the third day after the crucifixion, his tomb was empty. 
could your loved ones do the same? Mary Magdalene had been to the tomb early and found the stone rolled away. She ran to tell the disciples. Peter and John ran to see for themselves. The Bible says, so they ran both together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the, to the, to the tomb. And stooping down, looking in, and saw the linen and clothing lying. Yet went he not in there. Then cometh Simon Peter, showing following him and went into the to the scepter and 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 see if the linen clothes there that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself then went in also the other disciple which came first to the tomb and he saw and believed as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. The disciples had a lot to think about. They knew Jesus had died, but they had forgotten the many prophecies concerning his resurrection. See, when you study the word of God to know God's truth, you won't be swayed by the satanic lies. The Bible says, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. But yet today, the world says, oh, it's not Jesus, it's, it's the Easter, it's, it's the egg. Be worried about the egg, go find the egg, and, and chase that little bunny rabbit around. That way you don't know nothing about what happened. Go after the bunny, chase the bunny, and forget about Jesus. Because that's the whole purpose of Satan, is to make sure you don't know how to get to heaven. See, Satan already knows what heaven is like. He already been there, he got kicked out. So he wants to make sure you too stay out. In fact, let me tell you something real quick. Heaven is shut to the person who denies Christ. Heaven is shut to you. You won't get to heaven if you deny Christ. Every Christian around here knows that. Heaven is shut to you. The scriptures referred to are Old Testament prophecies. More prophecy is behind fulfilled today. The Bible, they say the Bible is not real. The Bible was written by men. The Bible is not God's word, but yet, the Bible speaks about what's happening today. How in the world does a book that was written by men speak so perfectly about what's happening today? And yet the book of Revelations was written in AD 90. How many years ago was that? More than 2000. But yet when you look at the book of Matthew 24 specifically, You'll see that it speaks about earthquakes, famines. In fact, there's a food shortage being put together right now. If you go on the internet and you look up the, 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 the food plants, you'll see they're all catching on fire. Tyson's food plant caught on fire. Where are you going to get your food when this all comes down the pike? Where are you going to get your food? One day, Stop and Shop is gonna say, we have no food. We have no food for you. What are you going to do? Because when the Israelites needed food, God rained down manna from the sky. When they needed water, they cracked the rock open and water came out. But for you, where are you gonna get your food? There's no greater love than that has ever been shown than God himself entering his creation, laying down his life so that by faith in him, a sinner such as I can live eternally with him in heaven. Heavenly Father, everlasting Father, I pray to you now.
I thank you that you are merciful and forgiving to your people. Even though we have rebelled against you, Lord, I pray for those who are in this parking lot, even though some of them may not like me. I ask you, Lord Jesus, today to touch their hearts and their minds and comfort them. Many times we have turned away from you to try and rule over our own life. We have sinned and thought, word and deed, but your mercy is greater than our sin. Your love is bigger than our rebellion. Most merciful God, Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, if there's any here today that are going to confess their sins, we confess that we have sin and thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our own heart. And we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have ignored your commands. We have rejected your love, Lord. And I ask you today, Lord, I ask you today to have mercy upon those in this parking lot, in this area, in these stores that do not know you. Have mercy upon them, Lord. In your mercy, please forgive them and transfer, transform their hearts. Empower them through your spirit. Help them to justly love mercy. Walk humbly with you. My God, through Jesus Christ, you have said that our faith will never be put to shame when our trust is in you. I ask you today, Lord, to forgive us. Guide our words, our thoughts, and deeds today that we may live in a way that glorifies you. Through Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.